Hello Black, episode 154, you know, it's been a lot of tears lately, tears over corporations leaving Oakland, tears over elected officials, but uh, you know, we're going to try and ground y'all in some reality of what's going on on the ground uh, in Oakland and give you all an analysis of the conditions and some of the factors that is a uh, making things shake in Oakland. So should be a good episode. You know, again, we're going to stick to the facts of the, the facts the best we can and give you all analysis. Uh, so hopefully y'all think with us, not like us, you know what I'm saying? At least we're, we're thinking together and trying to gain a better understanding of all the factors that play, why it's happening and being able to understand most importantly, uh, how do we build programs for decolonization to where we can actually uh, govern ourselves and control our reality day in and day out as a people. Yeah, before we get started, though, definitely, um, I guess like a few housekeeping things we want to. So you know, niggas been organizing. Yeah, <laughs> it's like yeah, a few housekeeping things real quick. You know, keep the warehouse clean, doors locked. <laughs> yeah, want to shout out um the new blog that we've launched. I mean, if you've been following people's programs for at least the last like three years, I would say. Uh, you might have been keeping up with some of the writings and, and analysis that we provide via our medium. But what we're trying to do now, uh, via our medium and our actual magazine, um, that we've done two, like, hard, I guess, like, hardcover issues for. Um, and, yeah, we've turned it into a blog. And, excuse me, it is our hope that uh, we can be more consistent with uh, getting content and analysis out. But if you go to Free to People Press, dot com right now we have like we have a digital magazine that we did for black radical month um and that features a story written by a boss that highlights a community initiative that we've uh launched last month and have another event coming up this month that we'll be able to highlight soon um but that feature story of that magazine uh has a piece written by a boss that uh highlights roderick's barbecue in east oakland um, Shout out to everybody who pulled up to our first yeah. community business initiative and bought some merch. You know, if you haven't got any merch yet and you want to get some, go to peoplesprograms.com. We did a, a merch collaboration with them and free bread. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we've been trying to, again, which which we'll talk about throughout this episode is just a lot of the uh, discourse that's been happening around, um, you know, corporations leaving and uh, I guess like this propaganda around Oakland not being safe for businesses, which, you know, it's never as black and white as people want to make it. And we'll try to provide analysis. We will provide analysis on that, but uh, we've been trying to get people to wrap their heads around like what is a community business versus a business in the community, right? Like what did in and out which we'll talk about, what does in and out do for the, for the community? What does Denny's do for the community? Uh, what do some of these more smaller places that have left, what did they actually do for the community besides take our money and say, Oh, shop with black businesses as a, uh, marketing tool for them, but they really don't shop local. You know, they don't really care anything about the community or the black people in the community further than they own pocketbooks. Period. Right. And then again, also on in that uh, digital magazine, we just have a bunch of art from um, local artists. We got some poetry in there. We got a great piece. Yeah, I, I wrote a piece. That, uh, supplements uh, what mm -hmm. we've talked about on the podcast and probably what we're going to talk about today. So make sure y'all tap in with that piece as well. And then uh, an organizer and member of People's Programs, Diani, also has a piece they wrote uh, connecting the, the genocide in Gaza to some of the genocidal conditions uh, here in West Oakland. So there's just a lot of analysis on there. So I would say go to freetopeoplepress.com, go to Instagram and follow our Instagram uh, so y'all can keep up with just like the latest writings and analysis. And as always, go to patreon.com backslash hella black podcast and share uh, you know, the power with as many people as possible. Because, Subscribe and, yeah. and help us fund this. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Help us fund the podcast. Help us fund what we was doing, you know? So I mean, appreciate I, I, everybody yeah. who's been doing it. You know what I'm saying? So tell a friend. Tell a friend to become a patron of Hella Black. You know what I'm saying? We kicking that real, uh, speaking that truth to New African struggle. Yeah, there there are a lot of great podcasts out there, but um, are there no stop. yeah I mean I, you know I, I got something I listen to for no, just, to, to get analysis but I would say like objectively speaking um, there tends to be a gap in 
uh, really understanding like what this means for the oppressed new African nation, uh, even on some of these more, you know, uh, black or, or new African or African podcasts that claim to be about Pan-Africanism, but, you know, um, reject our political line as uh, a nation within a nation and our right to sovereignty. Um, so I was saying, yeah. colonial position, yeah. colonized position as a domestic colony in the so-called United States of America. So, so if you if you respect the idea of uh, sovereignty for Africans here in America, um, I think this podcast might be the only uh, platform where you can get that international and national understanding of uh, how you know Western imperialists have uh, prevented us from having self determination and sovereignty, and so. Yeah, while I think that there are some great podcasts out there, I think we have a niche and a lane um, that we feel well in. I just wish that we would. I don't want to wish because, you know, they, I'm going to listen. I'm going to think about what Ross says where he says, you know, don't try, just do. You know? uh, so I was going to say I wish we could. Uh, record more. <laughs> yeah, record more. So I, you know, uh. Yeah, we going to record more. We keep saying it. We're going to keep putting it out there. But again, also, you know, when you run in a, cadre organization and that's your first and main priority and of course media is a priority from a cadre organization uh and getting information out to the masses of people but you know sometimes you might set your intention to record in the morning yeah. and then something happens that needs your immediate attention within the organization then your whole day has to change you know what i'm saying and then you have other obligations in the day and you know the podcast doesn't get recorded <laughs> I'm speaking to a very real situation to why, you know, we recording, you know, today on Sunday, March 3rd, 2024, 11.15 p.m. or a.m. See, that's how, you know, it's, yeah. it's been a week. But regardless, <laughs> I, I think, uh, again, I would just encourage y'all to keep listening to the pod. We listen to episodes. Me, myself, even the podcast that I listen to, I, I've, uh, I listen to them over and over again to fully gain understanding. And I cannot... Uh, echo the sentiment enough of how grateful I am that we've been able to get uh, this much support over the last uh, 2016 was when we did our first podcast so it's about to be 8 years when was our first episode like October or something like the fall of I'd have to scroll all the way back yeah. I was, it was it was a sunny day I remember that let me see we walked down Ashby <laughs> yeah we go, we go on almost 8 years so I'm just I'm, I'm grateful for all y'all support man Can I have Eight year hella black Period live show black. maybe might Let be coming see. up or something. I don't know. June first, twenty sixteen. I knew, I knew it was a sunny day. Oh, that's insane. I remember a sunny day. We walked down from yeah. uh, eight years, bro. From Ashby to San Paulo. That's crazy. I mean, the organization about to be seven years old. Yeah. You know? Hey, been doing something. I'll you know probably listen to some of these episodes and cringe. Holy hell. <laughs> I, yeah, 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 I know yeah, I would. I found one of my notes sure. from like 2017 around like an analysis I had on capitalism. Like you could just tell I was just talking. <laughs> like you ain't read shit. Like, like what does this even mean? Uh, what you, it is so wrong. Like yeah, I will say though, there's some episodes you feel me that we actually our analysis ended up proving to be true. You know what I'm saying? Some of these like, I want to delete. Going, oh for sure. There's a lot of <laughs> we should I delete would, some I would, of these. I would love to delete. <laughs> If I get your uh, editorial approval, my brother, I'm delete, some of these. delete, delete, delete. Uh, <laughs> but we go back to episode two. We just, you know, we was talking about Jay Z's, the Cornell West, mm -hmm. the Van Jones, you know, and the neoliberal class. You feel me? And you know, a lot of what we were saying then proved to be uh, true in the moment and continues to be true today. You know, so. There is a lot of game there. There is a lot of game. There's primitive game analysis. Given, you know, but... Uh, primitive, primitive. Again, you could also... Uh, I think that's the... What some might say, uh, the vulnerable part of being a podcaster. You can go back and listen to every episode. So, and, you know, you can be like, oh, <laughs> the hell are these niggas talk about? But then, you know, you listen to a newer episode, you're like, oh, dang. But if you think about it, you go from episode two, then you listen to Tales of the Town, you're like, what? That's pretty insane. Yeah. You know, so, hey... I mean, this well, is a byproduct like, of like growing up in front of people. You judge me about my progress. Yeah, you're growing up in front of people. <laughs> but yeah, uh, eight years. Yeah, we, eight years. You know. So appreciate all y'all support, regardless. Like I was saying, whether you're able to be a patron or not. Um, in terms of this episode, right? Like a boss was alluding to, 
trying to provide some analysis uh, on, yeah, it's a local issue, but national and also international as well, right? Uh, so, yeah, I just say we find ourselves like in a very backwards and conflicting moment on a local, national, international level, especially with it being uh, an election year, right? And the and the fascists like saying any and everything to secure their political and economic interests. Like this is the time of year where it's like, and yeah, you're also seeing like the different fronts of fascism as well. Mm -hmm. You know, the different sectors of it uh, that might even be beefing with each other, and who's the best fascist? Yeah, it's 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 a uh, it's wild. Like especially even on like the YouTube ads and stuff with all the different. Um, like senators and yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, like I don't know, county supervisors, yeah, like these aldermen, like they should be going at each other. It's, it's wild, and they just like saying anything, you know. And but it's a, uh, it's also yeah, it's, it's just a wild time because they're like playing on people's emotions, um, and really playing on people's fears, you know, because you you, uh, it's fears, emotions for sure. It's the hyper of it, but there's also real things happening. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So, But it's the way it's being uh, manipulated by, you know, uh, right wing, uh, by people who probably might utter the words and even call themselves progressive. Mm -hmm. uh, it's being ma manipulated for certain economic reasons and certain political reasons. You know what I'm saying? Like things are being used for certain gains. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like... It's a dirty game that's being played. Mm -hmm. It's a very dirty game being played. It's basically like who wants to control the police at, at this aspect, especially in the city local. And it's like who wants to control the police? No, you can't control. You know them. what I'm saying? You want to be side by side with them. You know, controlling these pigs. We can look at. So let's look at. Uh, we're going to use one specific situation, one recent situation, to provide this historical and contemporary analysis, right? So what happened with In and Out recently? Well, you know, some, you've seen it even just go viral, even on Instagram, even amongst like people like that. I follow. oh my God, it's in and out. It's going, it's leaving, man. Oakland, bro. We got to do better. Bay area, man. We got to do better. Like in and out's even leaving. Like this is insane. Right. So in and out, which is owned by a right wing evangelical billionaire, uh, decided to close his doors uh, in East Oakland. Uh, by the airport, citing crime and safety concerns. The business itself has been economically very successful. There's always a line, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't because of economic reasons is what they're claiming, or rather because of crime, rather because of uh, safety concerns, because they said, uh, you know, windows have been broken in and cars have been broken in uh, over there. And the owner, who's a right-wing evangelical billionaire who supports the so-called state of Israel, decided to say, oh, we're going to move out of Oakland, right? I think we have to understand the certain right-wing goals of that, right? Where Oakland, in many ways, is becoming this political punching bag by the far right in an election year where, you know, it's accused that the Democratic left isn't tough on crime, which is just a joke in itself because we know Joe Biden put more police into the streets than Trump, funded the police uh, more than Trump, <laughs> Right. Uh, we could even say the uh, the mayor of Oakland, Shang Tao, has put in, you know, uh, voted for more police academies, uh, you know, has been pro-police, has even said it out of her own mouth that she's in solidarity with Oakland police and is for the Oakland Police Department, right? Uh, but you're seeing this right-wing campaign of, you know, attacking, quote-unquote, <laughs> the Democrats because what they want is the right-wing control. So for me, I I personally... My analysis on this is that this is a part of the, the game that is being played, right, of creating over sensationalization of uh, crime. Uh, and when you do that, you're putting fear into people, right? You're putting fear for a political objective of wanting to turn Oakland into this uh, right wing, tough on crime uh, city post the abolition movement. Right. Mm -hmm. So she says, OK, we're closed. We're closing down are in and out because of the crime and safety. Then everyone gets all mad, say, Oakland, we got to do better. And then the funny parts in is when, you know, you have these uh, uh, so-called organizers and uh, uh, pastors coming together and say, hey, 
we are going to pray for the city of Oakland at the In-N-Out Burger parking lot. Like, you can't make some of this stuff up. Like, 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 Simpsons. like this is really like some Simpsons meets South Park meets Boondocks of people coming to the parking lot of In-N-Out, the right-wing evangelicals, some of the black clergy in Oakland, and the Oakland NAACP all coming together at the In-N-Out parking lot to lead a prayer circle because we are, quote-unquote, mourning the loss of In-N-Out. Praying, I mean, they did like say, they did, <laughs> praying in front of a corporation like, is insane. That is like that is the most like just even from a theological perspective, like that is like <laughs> you praying false in front worship, of the in and out, like that is worship, like yeah. literally worshiping capitalism. Yeah. Like, okay, I understand prayer, but to say to use this moment, a political moment. That is being funded by the right wing maybe evangelicals. Maybe they don't see that's political, though. Maybe it's, uh, they, you know, I don't know. These, some of these people are smarter and know exactly what they're doing, and doing that in front of the In-N-Out parking lot, right? So that is a of a In-N-Out that's owned by a right wing evangelical who supports Israel. There's some nasty things going on, <laughs> right? With an agenda of doing what? Increasing the police presence in the city of Oakland. That's what the goal is. You know, so it's, uh, again, when we hear organizations like the NAACP in Oakland, it's not surprising if you look at uh, the history of the NAACP. I mean, it's 2024. You're still running around calling yourselves colored people and <laughs> organizing know, behind that. <laughs> no, nah, <so> seriously. Like, <laughs> like seriously, that's just, that's just insane. Uh, but this is the same organization that was in the front of the courthouse demanding uh police officer to be reinstated as the chief of police armstrong right so we're dealing with a a class of people who claim to be activists right <laughs> who claim to be in the community who claim to be organizers who actually have a very much pro police agenda want to see the militarization of the police in oakland want to see uh tough on crime police and wanting to see essentially uh pat downs and you feel me uh, armed raids and you know essentially you're calling for the killing of any person who does any type of property related crime like this is what's happening right now yeah we're seeing uh neoliberalism at a at a very high stage right because even if you think i think it was a it was acts for gospel that was a part of the right and like acts has a long history of community service right uh this is where we had our free uh covet testing right but this is what neoliberalism does, right? It will push civil and human rights while simultaneously uh, pushing the privatization of all sectors of society. And you know, when you have the privatization of all sectors of society, you're going to have the police to come and protect the wealth, uh, the interests of the wealthy. That's just what happens with neoliberalism. So I, I think, um, I think it's where it's like that that very murky line where some people know better and some people don't. Because then you have some real church going folks who are like, yeah, I want to, I want to pray for the city. Because it's like yeah. you said earlier, it, it, like we've been saying, like things are bad here. Like it's just, it's bad. It, it is bad. But we we're gonna talk about why it's actually bad, and we're gonna talk about the role that some of these corporations, some of these people have played. What what does In and Out care about community safety? What have they done? How many backpack giveaways have they done? How many grocery giveaways have they done? How many, How many free kids food? kids eat free today mm-hmm. have they done? They don't do anything but take money from the people. That's all they do. And I, I, I really be, we'll see how this plays out in a couple of years, but I wonder like what that real estate is going to be used for too later on. You know, like these, they look decades. And, oh, for sure. You know, so it's oh, like, I mean, even with the, you know, the Walmart closing over there and, yeah. you know, especially if you think about it, like. From a real estate perspective, we know that real estate war is going on, right? Mm-hmm. Especially if we look right over there at the Coliseum, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the parking lot over there and how much money and they want to develop. You know, if you think about it, they want, they are letting these things happen for a reason. They're not wanting to solve certain things for a reason, right? They want resources uh, to be taken away. Because if we look at, if we just understand the history of the development of Oakland, especially if we go back Again, the tales of the town when we talk about 7th Street, mm-hmm. right? We talk about even gentrification, right? A part of gentrification is the actual resource ex- extraction from the community, right? Uh, to where then those resources are then bought up. And then new, quote-unquote, uh, developments happen 
that isn't for the people who've been living there in general, right? It ain't no secret that, you know, they want DP East Oakland to be hyper-developed and to be redeveloped. It's like one of you the know, last, one of the last... Enclaves. Yeah, of like... Real African, new African community. What you feel me, the, uh, you know, brown folks out there as mm-hmm. well, you know what I'm saying? And it's like a real, it's a real hood. Mm-hmm. You know, so if that's part of the war, and you think about the Oakland airport, mm-hmm. similar to how you would think about the post office on 7th Street, mm-hmm. now they want to be able to redevelop, and we're going to start hearing the, the about the, the 98th corridor, you know what I'm saying, to where they're going to want to build, you know, nice hotels and extravagant shopping and build a nice mall over there or something, because part of their public infrastructure development over that in the area has been saying that's what they want to do. Hey. Right, you don't see the development of uh, of E one four and the way the lanes are shifting for no reason. Mm-hmm. Right? This, they <laughs> they they're prepping. Focus. They're, they're prepping. They're making their preparations to turn the land into something that is more beneficial for the upper class and the bourgeoisie. Mm-hmm. It's and a land the process, grab. They're going to be removing a certain demographic of the people, and if we recognize what demographic of people are based on the based on a. Uh, we have to understand this. I'm gonna get into this a little later, but I'm gonna say it now. We have to understand this as a war on black youth, which Oakland has historically done. Where you talking about the Black Panther Party, right? Whether we can even talk about this uh, this moment where this tough on crime resurgence is a byproduct of the defund the police movement, in which you saw Oakland public schools and Oakland youth, uh, really Oakland youth and the uh, and BOP, the Black Organizing Project, right, uh, remove OUSD school police. Oakland Unified School District School Police, right? So this is youth leading these movements, right? And this is this is a response. This is a response to that. Again, it goes back to our episode where we talked about containment strategies and counterinsurgencies. Because if you understand down to a science how social movements work, especially in the United States of America, Oakland in many ways is an epicenter. What happens in the city of Oakland essentially is going to cause shockwaves throughout the whole nation. You know, so if you're able to contain revolution, if you're going to be able to contain rebellion in the city of Oakland and dictate it for it to move in a certain desired direction of the state. There's a reason why everything in Oakland is happening at this moment, right? Because as the United States uh, acts in the most in in its imperialist fashion, as its uh, conditions here at home are going to get worse. Why are they putting in cop cities? Right. So we got to understand <laughs> the development of uh, the development and the con- uh, the de- development of containment strategies. Mm-hmm. Right. And trying to stop any type of, you know, rebellions from existing. Right. Because if you know what happened in 09 with the, uh, the assassination and the murder of, of Oscar Grant and the way that sent shockwaves throughout the nation that we still is, you know, they're trying to still contain. Now in 2024, which led to, you know, the Black Lives Matter and, of course, all the contradictions within that. Mm -hmm. But that had a, that was a significant epoch to where they was, hey, we got to contain this. We can even look at last month, shut down the port. Shut down the port. Preventing weapons from being shipped. We can look at the role that, uh, you know, black folks in Oakland during, uh, well, now we can still consider South Africa apartheid regime, you know, but like mm. shutting down the ports, it's just like historically the role that uh, black youth, the black community of Oakland has played in shaping uh, national, international politics. That's, that's that's what's going on here. But again, if if the thing that the media does a great job doing is like getting people caught up in moments and making these moments seem like they appeared out of thin air, you know, like. That's what they do a good job of doing is like I, sensualization through their own. How do we get here? Capitalist direction. Uh, that's, that's that's what people don't, don't ask. So you you've seen in Union Square they're saying they're shutting down Macy's and now they're trying to do the same thing, and people don't realize they're shutting down 150 Macy's nationwide. People don't go shop at stores like that anymore. That's just the part of the shift of the economy. Why is there no Blockbuster? <laughs> Did Blockbuster shut down because of crime? You feel me? 150 Macy's nationwide, but of course, because we're in the Bay Area, it's in San Francisco, and there's all this talk around, you know, bipping and robberies, they're going to politicize it into a certain direction because they want San Francisco to become shit, excuse my language, Florida in some ways. You know what I'm saying? They want it to become this like right wing 
uh, right wing city. You know, or they recognize conservative. That, they recognize that people don't fully understand the depths of uh, what some of these corporations serve as, uh, like damn near corporate real estate moguls. That's what <laughs> you know, like straight up. Realistically, though, yeah. like these people just be owning hella land, and they'll sell it when it becomes the most profitable. Mm-hmm. And I do agree with the sentiment of like Oakland, we need to do better, but it ain't. I don't think starting at and praying in and out is the start. I don't think like like that's not going to change the culture. You like, know, yeah, like yeah, we could co- collectively agree that a code needs to be developed in the city of Oakland. Collectively, mm-hmm. we can agree to certain things, right? We could agree that change needs to be made, but is falling falling into a right wing evangelical campaign campaign about praying in front of the city of uh and praying in front of in and out is that part of it? Is that part of the solution? We should have been praying at these schools when they were shutting these down. We should have been praying at Mac when it was lead found in the water and students was getting cancer. Hello. We should be praying on the corner as uh, masses of new Africans sleep on the street. As if we want to pray for something. <laughs> I don't know. We should, well, I don't think that that you, even, you, in and out leaving shouldn't be the pray, catalyst. You praying in front of a place that offers you some mediocre French fries and a mediocre burger. Bro, people was crying over Denny's. And they beat ain't even halal. <laughs> people was crying over Denny's leaving. I'm like, okay, it can't be nobody from here because we used to go to Denny's after functions and they was racist as fuck. Didn't even want to serve niggas. What y'all talking about? Like, y'all don't even eat at these. Some, like, well, well, come on, man. What are we talking Denny's? about? Like, I even seen an article that came out. It was like, uh, a long time, 53-year-old Oakland diner is shutting down. I'm like, y'all are talking about Denny's? A corporation. Nigga, I'm like, you would think these niggas are my lowest the pie queen. <laughs> Denny's. Denny's was yeah, good. Come on. You know, we got to. There is changes that need to be made. And the first change will be to recognize the true causes. The true causes. Because right now, we're only looking at yeah. the effects. And by not looking at the causes, you know. Mm-hmm. So, speaking of causes, can you tell us about some of the conditions that got us to this point? Number one. How we frame things on this on this podcast is recognizing that everything is a byproduct of uh, an economic system and economic motives. So this is why you hear us talk a lot about uh, colonization, which is an economic effort. You hear us talk a lot about capitalism, which is an economic system that has social, political, and ideological manifestations. So why you hear us talk about imperialism, right? Because we understand how economics uh, governs all as all aspects of life. Um, and so there's just a few stats that I will uh, that I'll speak to to help us grasp uh, the economic we economic situation uh, we find ourselves in. Right again, so if we can do this, we can talk. About, we can understand the causes. We can see very simple how we got to these effects. Uh, again, that first cause being capitalism. Right, capitalism as a social, economic, and political system where uh, the means of production, right, the land, the tools, the hours, the jobs are all decided uh, by a few wealthy elite. Right. Uh, And that system creates the following economic conditions, right, where you have 70 percent of people on food assistance programs working full or part time. Seventy percent of people on food assistance programs, they either work full or part time. Fifty three percent of people sleeping in shelters work full or part time. This is a national stat. Right. Uh, You have the cost of basic goods, eggs, bread, meat have gone up 76% since 2020. So when they talk about how all these billionaires, I remember like all the stories that was like all these billionaires and millionaires that were being made over yeah. at, during 2021, 2020, 2020, 2021. That's, that's because why. the cost of basic goods have gone up, have <laughs> gone why. up, right? Uh, wages have been stagnant f- since the ni- late 1970s. For over half a century, wages have been stagnant. So as the cause, so your wage might go up, but so did the cost of living, right? Uh, it says that workers spend nearly half of their income on rent. People spend nearly half of their income on rent, right? Uh, Then there's this situation where uh, people love talking about the Biden, these Democrats love talking, these Democratic fascists love talking about how uh, I think it's like 14 million jobs have been created under the Biden administration. What what are the quality of jobs, though? If we talking about 70% of people that, that, that work are on food assistance programs, 53% of people sleeping in shelters have work full or part time. What quality of jobs are we getting? Right? In Oakland, the we have 
Oakland has a $4.2 billion budget for the next two years. That's larger than some countries' GDPs. This city, bro, has a $4.2 billion budget. That's larger than some countries' GDPs. The OPD has, has a $700 million budget from 2023 to 2025, right? 16%, that's 16, damn near 17% of the, of the, of the city's budget. Mm -hmm. While Parks and Rec Student Services has 40 million. That's less than 1%, <laughs> right? This is the economic turmoil and like ideological backwardness that governs this city, that governs this nation. Uh, I speak, you know, I say this as I myself have thousands of dollars of uh, medical debt from work-related stress. What are we talking about? Quality of life. And you're like, in and out ain't gonna solve none of in and out being here, in and out not being here. This ain't, it's not doing nothing to impact the quality of our lives. All right. We have to recognize that uh this whole situation, again, we find ourselves in is a byproduct of an economic reality that thus leads to like the following political situation where you have in 2023 the police killed 1,200 people. Um there were 1,600 robberies in Oakland from January to July that makes or January to June of last year. That makes complete sense to me when you look at again the economic situation. Niggas is broke. Niggas is hungry. Right? People sleeping on the streets. What do you expect humans to People do? People working and can't even pay rent. Literally can't afford rent but is working. Cuz there isn't a living wage in the city of Oakland. There were 118 homicides last year. Like this, this, when we look at, again, the uh, economic situation, this does not catch me up. This is just seems like simple one plus one equals two. Yeah. It's going to happen because of that. It's just the reality. When people are degraded every day by the system that they find themselves in, how can you not become that? And you see it every day as Bro, well. Dry, we you know, because even, even time, sometimes you'll hear from people like, oh, you know, they ain't broke. They don't need it. But what happens... All right, let's take that for example if that's actually true, right? But what happens when the society is all based in consumerism? When every single day you are pumped at and you're seen as less, less worthy if you don't have the newest thing, if you don't have the nice clothes, if you don't have the nice jeans, if you don't have nice shoes, right? So you're talking about a society that is consumerist where your value is determined based off of the clothes that you wear, based off of the car that you was driving. You feel me? So if someone can't afford to, you know, quote unquote, be a part of this America. They going to do something to be a part and feel like they're a part of it. <laughs> In we've, some we've ways. Dealing, you know we've been dealing with these. With Even these, if that is the case, you know? Yeah. We've been dealing with these wild, uh, like we've, we've been having these storms, right? The last couple of days. And like there are people who have to sleep outside on the streets of this shit. I'm driving past people. You watching people. You feel me? Smoke dope on the corner. I'm watching motherfuckers walk around, the holes in their jeans, ass out, feet out. Like seeing that every day and having to just keep going on with my life. Like, what is that? What is that doing to my psyche? What is it doing to the per person's psyche yeah. actually has to live in that? And then what does it do to everyone else's psyche as well? You know what I'm saying? Like, what does it do to people like living in those neighborhoods, like really struggling too? You feel me? It's like your life ain't valued. Humanity ain't There's valued. There's a total disregard. So like, why would you value humanity when everything around you isn't being valued? And no one is teaching you to value humanity either. There's a total you disregard I mean? for, for humanity, right? So we have this economic situation again, where we talk about wages being stagnant. 70% of people on food assistance programs working full or part-time. Uh, you have people who sleep in shelters also working. Um, you have the cost of basic goods going up. You have people spending ha more than half of their income just, or half of their income just on rent alone. So you ain't even inc including food. You ain't including clothes. You ain't including gas, right? Uh, and from that, you have... For that, for that total disregard of, of humanity via the economic system, uh, you're going to get a total disregard for humanity in the way that humans engage with one another, right? Um, and then from that, from that reality, right? And I, we mentioned some of the situations in, in Oakland, right? Uh, and I think in a, another episode, we should use this as an opportunity to like ex expand on the war for the cities that we've been kind of alluding to, right? And really using uh, like Yaki and George as a basis for that analysis. But for right now you get the, we have to understand this as a war for the city and the war on, on new African youth, right? Uh, 
And this situation is, uh, we, we've already alluded to this, already made this clear that we understand this as a very dire situation. 1,600 robberies. I mean, it's the pigs. This is the city of Oakland giving you the data. Oakland Police Department giving you this data. So I, in the city of Oakland who are, me, the, you know. The OPD who be robbing people every single hand, day. Hand to hand, right? They, they hand to hand. Literally they, they robbing people in. every single day when they do their raids and all that. You know what I'm saying? If you think about yeah. the, the uh, civil asset forfeiture that happens through quote unquote police departments. But let's just say, let's just say, I would say even a hundred robberies is too much. Now, I don't know, you, you, utopian shit, but if like, I believe if we can actually have respect for one another that you want- Robberies could be eliminated, very people much. People have, people have solid jobs and healthcare and feel like they actually yeah. value to if their society. If their human rights are, are protected and we should see, we should see you, don't, you ain't gonna see that. And you're gonna see the people stop it. You know right. what I'm saying? Because the culture is now developed towards one that is uh, humanistic and egalitarian. Mm -hmm. So we get that economic system, which does creates that political situation. And from that political reality, you get uh, some different responses, responses that you and I have been talking about, right? Uh, uh, some of the responses I would say are, again, from misunderstanding. And some of these responses are from a full understanding and wanting to take advantage of the situation, of the people's dire uh, desire for need and uh, for change, right? Um, and so we can talk about the first part. Yeah, from from that political, from that economic situation, you get this political reality, and from that political reality, you get people responding in different ways, right? Uh, I think some of the and most of the responses have been tough on crime, right? Uh, but I would say that the tough on crime rhetoric is has like two elements to it. One being some people like again just uh feeling really vulnerable, scared, and confused at the situation we find ourselves in. And then the others capitalizing on these people's uh, emotions, emotions, vulnerability, and, Pain. And, and being scared, right? Uh, so yeah, when, you, when you're scared and miseducated, it makes sense as to why someone would be out in front of Target, like recall Pamela Price, recall Shang Tao, like recognizing that these people are nothing but uh, pawns for an ideology and, and for a system, right? But then you get the people. Also, doesn't mean we're endorsing Shang Tao. No, I mean I, I, don't, I, I would hope anybody who's even uh, just heard six seconds of any <laughs> Pamela of our hundred and fifty three episodes. Because what is a progressive prosecutor? Yeah, and we just already told you about Shang Tao and her pro police agenda for the city of Oakland in the beginning of this episode. What? What is? I mean, just ask yourself, what does uh, having these crimes prosecuted more more harshly going to do? How is that going to prevent, how is that going to address the your rent taking up half of your income? How is locking people up going to address the fact that wages have been stagnant for over half a century? How is locking people up? Uh, we could like bipping could robberies and stuff can stop right now. Robbery isn't the reason why wages are stagnant. Robbery isn't the reason why uh you have to pay more than half your income on rent. Robbery isn't the reason why they robbing you if you're talking about basic goods have gone up 76 percent. They rob us every day. And we can send every it. single day they rob us. You talk about getting bipped. What like, about PG and E raising their rates? Robbery. They rob us every day. <laughs> All right, so like again, we have to ask ourselves. Like we gotta begin to think critically, which we know society doesn't want us to do, which we know media doesn't want us to do. They want to just feed you information. That's why you saying like we don't you even gotta agree with us. We're just trying to give you some objectives, like just to think, start to think with us, right? Uh, so I think anyone who's found themselves like saying like or wondering like what can we do? We need more. We need new. Like first thing you can do is understand the economic system and how that again uh, governs society. Right, so we have that misunderstood, misunderstood, miseducated. Right, again, recognizing that uh, putting more people in jail will not address stagnant wages. It will not address uh, you having meaningful employment. Then on the other side, you have those who fully understand the institutions, the ideology of this country, and uh, how they were formed, and they choose to mislead the people to buy into capitalism and to overt policing. Right, uh, and like we said, that's like the very dirty and nasty work of integration. Um, which I want to let you expand on the next question in terms of like integration. Well, I think for, you see all the time, just because I follow like so many of the peers and people in the town saying, uh, what can we do to change Oakland? And I would say first and foremost, the first thing you got to do is learn. You, you, you have to learn. Uh, learn the history of this city. 
learn the history of policing in this city, whether it's recruiting KKK uh, members from the South, recruiting those fascist Jim Crow pigs from the South and bringing them up here in a response to uh, the Great Migration, in the response to the black community growing as a result of white flight, right? Like learn this history uh, and see, it's, you'll, once you learn our history, you'll see how it's like uh, manifesting in present day. This is just, we, we talking about what's happening today is the same thing that was happening in the 1950s. What's happening today is the same thing that's happening in the 60s and 70s. It's just a 21st century manifestation of it, you know? Um, and I think lastly, last thing I'll say on this is, uh, I think this also speaks to like the lack of creativity on the lack of like belief and creativity. And, and maybe this is falls, maybe this is like falls on, I think we have to say it falls on like organizers and organizations like ourselves who claim to have a full grasp of this thing. Uh, like we should be motivating the people, immersing ourselves in the people in a much better way to where they can start to dream outside of the state. things that are presented in front, you know, like they, like you just said, the state, like they really believe that the only option is more police to this thing that what that isn't a byproduct of the police. But it just shows you how much our development has been arrested by capitalist imperialism, that even our dreams end up going back to backing the state in the system that is oppressing us. Right. That's how like deep, you know what I'm saying? If you think about like Fanon and how he's talking about uh, the psychological aspect of uh, colonization. Right. We are so colonized within our mentality that even our consciousness, when we think we're coming up with a solution, the solution is a part of our genocide and is a part of our people's constant, uh, constant uh, oppression. That's a, that's a deep issue. Yeah. <laughs> That's a deep issue, you know, and we'll be talking about all the time. We got to free our minds, start asking follow So the question is, too, what you're alluding at is, again, it is the responsibility of revolutionary cadre organizations. If we're not getting uh, and being amongst the people, amongst the community, right, versus just being online and being in webinars, being in our echo chambers, mm -hmm. if we ain't amongst the people. Why are we going to expect the people to act how we want them to act. You know what I'm saying? Or to uh, develop a collective consciousness that is uh, decolonized. It's part of the problem. Part of the problem. I want to go back to the NAACP because I feel like we did two things. We kind of, one, let them off the hook. And two, I think we should uh, just give people like a historical understanding of some of the like, what you can say, I guess, like progressive or yeah, some of the more, like the things they've actually done for for new Africans, right? Because they, they do have some wins. Period. If you, they they do have some things, uh, but it's rec it's important to recognize or to understand it via its uh, historical time frame, right? Uh, yeah. So I think my first part is like, how have they become regressive as it pertains to the advancement of new Africans, and then what is actual advancement, and how could they be contributing to that? Yeah, I think when we think about black struggle the new african struggle in the united states of america we got to understand the historical development uh the epochs and how uh, organizations and consciousness have shifted over times right uh essentially there's two ideals integration or independence right and if you look at it from that foundation the naacp has never been for independence of colored people. Mm -hmm. It's been for the advancement of colored people within the structure of the United States of America, mm -hmm. within integration, right? So mm -hmm. even if you look at the foundation of uh, NAACP, right, you know, it wasn't exactly colored people in the founding. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, so if we look at it from that realm, right, they've been tasked with essentially uh, integrating, creating policy, uh, essentially putting as Malcolm would say, a, a Band-Aid on a gaping wound instead of healing the wound entirely, right? Now, does that mean that they haven't done uh, things to advance civil rights, to advance, uh, uh, you know, uh, policies that might be less, uh, you know, less against our people? Yes, there's been, you know, those like minuscule reforms, like you, you could say, right? If you're, just, if you're being fair and objective, That's right? Rough, yeah. That has happened. Yeah. Now, at the same time, you know, Jaleel talks about, and we are all liberators, he talks about that the revolutionary forces must demand that 
the civil rights forces do the bare minimum. Mm -hmm. So that's what we have to hold the NAACP is to the bare minimum, right? But what happens when the bare minimum has now actually just being essentially their bare minimum is a part of uh, uplifting the state. And again, we know the national NAACP, right? Versus a local local chapter. chapter. Yeah. Right. You know, a chapter in San Jose might function very differently than the chapter in Oakland, Mm -hmm. you know, but if we look at specifically the NAACP in Oakland, what are they championing? You know, we're talking about a moment in Oakland where, you know, people were talking about abolish the police, where organizations like BOP were fighting uh, to get and fighting and successfully getting the police out of schools. And then now you have essentially the NAACP of Oakland uh, being a part of a counter uh, a counterinsurgency in terms of defunding the police, in terms of abolishing the police. And now they're on the courthouse steps saying, we want more police. We want to reinstate a police chief. Right. Just because he black. Just because he black. Right. So we take in this colored on one. We take in, OK, we want, you know, that that's our that's our chief. We is uh, taking this uh, superiority complex just, you know, because he's black makes him a good cop. Right. Rather than actually looking at the very institutions. And then they are saying, OK, let's bring more cops. That's our solution. Right. So their advancement, you know, maybe they are a part of a. It is a part of their philosophy of advancing colored people. I guess that's what they're doing is advancing colored people and the structure of the United National States. National advancement Local police, pigs. that's what they're doing. <laughs> colored pigs. You feel me? That's, that's, there you go. <laughs> There's the answer, right? So for us as a, I think, revolutionary cadre organization, we got to point to the contradictions uh, and demand upon them more uh, and, and up, the, up the ante. You say you're for the people. You say you're for the advancement of colored people. Uh, if we look at it from a scientific standpoint black cops engage black people at a similar rate that white cops engage the black community Mm -hmm. you feel me if we look at the case of freddie gray it was a bunch of black cops just because you black don't mean you good (laughs) just because you black doesn't mean you ain't have that blue on you know what i'm saying like yeah there might be small examples but again it's the institution we was talking about it's the greater institution of policing that has its roots and the enslavement of Africans that has its roots in protecting private property. And again, and this is that time period where they want private property be, to be protected. They want these corporations to be protected. They want the targets to be protected. You feel me? Like, the police ain't doing nothing to help you. You feel me? Your window get bibbed, they ain't doing nothing to help you. Your business get robbed, they ain't doing nothing to help you. Your business get robbed, the city of Oakland ain't doing nothing to help you. They might charge you to pick up the trash or the glass. Right, so we have to just be real about uh, these organizations and what their goals are and expose them uh, essentially as a part of the bourgeoisie, right? They might not even be in that class background <laughs> of being the bourgeoisie, but they're acting as you know the, the black bourgeoisie uh, and trying to secure the interests for the black bourgeoisie and advance the black bourgeoisie to be uh, the face of Oakland, but the masses of new Africans is being exploited, right? And we see this at a time period as well as post quote unquote COVID, even though COVID is still going on. And I think we have to also have the understanding of the international economy and the different shifts uh, with the wars, the different shifts with de-dollarization, even though I, my argument is that the U.S. was already ready for de-dollarization. But there's different shifts economically happening right now. Mm-hmm. There's shifts in a bunch of money is going to the Zionists, a bunch of money is going to Ukraine, right? Then you have a moment in time where incarceration rates because of COVID were going down. Even if it was around like 1%, one, 1%, 1%, you still, if you're talking about 1% of, you know, <laughs> millions of niggas locked up, that's a big number. Mm-hmm. So why now are we seeing a tough on crime? Why now are we saying lock people up? Why now are we in the middle of uh, a war? You need that labor. <laughs> you need that free labor, you right? As labor. their contradictions are shifting overseas, as the money is shifting, the profit margins are shifting, what do we need to now do now? We need to lock niggas up, lock new Africans up, make them forced labor. You know, we just seen that example of, uh, I think his brother, name, his name was Hamza. He, he was locked up 
And, you know, he worked days in and days out and maybe made like $17. Don't, don't quote me on the exact number. $17. He was making cents on the hour. He donated his whole paycheck to Palestine. If that don't show you like a solidarity, but it also exposes that he is a slave inside of the system. And a lot of these military goods is being made by people locked up. Mm -hmm. So what do they want to do? They want to lock up all the kids. You feel me? Who was quote unquote committing crime, put them inside a prison and then force them to work. Who's going to make money off of that? They also want to take that energy off the street. Who's going to make the money out? Make that money. Target. And of course, you know, also the revolutionary, you know, the potential Mm -hmm. uh, of people who have to risk it all. You feel me? To put food on their table. They learn from the party. A lot of the party's members was made up of people who had to, you know, who was living, you feel me, in the quote unquote lumping. Hand to foot. You know? Mm-hmm. So again, that's why you see. Foot the, to mouth, what they call it, hand to mouth. <laughs> hand to mouth. I, I knew what you were saying. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm saying? But we look at the game that is being played. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Again, if, you know, it's, it's like chess, man. You know, the, the, the man, they use their chess pieces. They're using the NAAC as a chess piece to advance a certain type of agenda in the city of Oakland. I mean, they're even know? using. They using Again, they take the. I'm I'm watching a lot of people being taken advantage of. That's what's called. And they don't even know that they're, they're being, being taken, taken advantage, advantage of. of. That that's that that's the that's the nastiest part, especially when uh you you know people who have uh given so much to this community or have taken so much from this community and they passed and like now want to right the wrongs, and you know it's like it's it's it's, it's so many. It's a very layered situation, uh. But at the end of the day, like objectively speaking, wow, we we know who's coming out on top of this thing right now. It's the fascists. It's the mm-hmm. one. It's the, it's the elite. It's the one percent. Like the fact that people can, the fact that these niggas get seven hundred million dollars, the fact that the youth programs get forty, and most of that is going to like staffing. It ain't no real resources being put into these, being put into it, right? You ain't going to these youth community. You ain't going to these youth centers and leaving with groceries every day. You ain't leaving with gas cars mm-hmm. every day. They ain't paying. You know, it's like the very basic. Uh, yeah. But yeah, like not not too many material needs being met. But that's why history is so important. Yeah, because if we understand history and if we're in the community actually educating people, you know, if we talk about even W. B. Du Bois as an example, he was a part of the NAACP. Study his life. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. study his life. What? Did, how did he die? He died a Pan Africanist. He rejected. He's one of the most aside from Martin Luther King. He's one of the most praised assimilationists. Mm-hmm. Was a part of the NAACP and left. Became a Pan Africanist. Decided to uh, be- become a part of revolutionary nationalist movements. So if Du Bois left back then, why are you in there now? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I-, I understand like they have the youth programs and stuff. There's a good, there's some but good things that they do, right? Yeah. But what are they pushing people to? You know what I'm saying? And how do we sh- make that shift from a, a-, a colonial integration? Integrative strategy to a revolutionary strategy. Yeah. You know? And that will only happen through strong revolutionary cadres. Through strong revolutionary cadres that have youth programs, that have youth involved. We gotta get you know to what work. I'm saying? We, we have to get to work. It's it's true. Like this it. is a message to us first and foremost. Yeah. You feel me? Sorry. Right. Oh, we mad about the NAACP, but they got their youth programs going and they, you know, they get their kids indoctrinated <laughs> into believing into the system. Okay, well, we need to <laughs> develop our youth programs more. And let the youth free their own mind and decide their own destiny. Mm-hmm. It's all love. So it's a, you know, like you were saying, it's some nasty work going on. Some nasty, nasty work going on. But you were kind of alluding to it. Um, but, you know, people have been using this current political climate as a means to uh, reassert this fascist, tough on crime rhetoric. Uh, in what ways are you seeing this play out uh, in Oakland? nationally and maybe you know what are some of the other factors that are playing uh internationally that is also influencing this tough on crime rhetoric i mean in addition to like the over the top budgets uh police budgets as it means to be tough on crime you're seeing again what we talked about earlier like the hyper focus on the da and the mayor right but like i don't know what more the da and the mayor can do to show that they actually stand with the police besides say i'm in solidarity with the police I think recently Pamela Price said some shit like she would give somebody a hundred years if, if she could. Yeah. You know, like what more do you want her to do? But doesn't that just show you, you know, this progressive people were saying she's progressive, a progressive prosecutor. But yeah. as soon as this, the you feel me, the uh, the right wing starts chirping, 
You know what I'm saying? You was bending to their will, saying, nah, I'm going to lock these new Africans up too. Let you me. have Shang Tao saying, we want more police. You have Shang Tao being with the governor and allowing a, a five-day blitz of the CHP and saying, here's our policy with the governor to get things better in Oakland, which means what? More police, more new Africans going to prison, more new Africans being subjugated to genocidal violence. Like, what What more could they possibly do to show y'all that they are tough on crime? I'm like, bro, they, 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 bro. these niggas want to take it back to, you feel me, mm. 1910. Like, they trying to see niggas get lynched and it's, for, for stealing. And there's going to be some niggas doing the lynching of other new Africans. They, they, they want to they wanna, they wanna see niggas. It's going to be some colored people saying <laughs> they're doing that. They want to see niggas get lynched. Like, I don't know how much more the DA, the mayor, and the city officials can show uh, that they support the lead, they they support the police in mass incarceration. Like they got the budgets, they doing the press conferences. The Alameda County jails are packed. OPD is making the most arrests in Alameda County. Uh, what more do you want? You want the budget to? You want another ten? You want the, the budget for Parks and Recs is only forty million. What, what more do you want them to do? You want to see people getting the death penalty for smash and grab? Is is that what we want? Right? They they I was yeah, watching a news clip. I was watching a news clip where Shang Tao was like, uh, if you commit a crime, you will be caught. Then like the next clip was showing the ages of the people committing the crimes, like fifteen to twenty five. It's kids. That's some nasty work because Shang Tao got some some black lackeys. Some black lackeys working for her. Some black lackeys doing security for her. And that's what's coming out of her mouth. And you standing beside her saying that because that's what she want to do to black youth. And it, it is sick and despicable. It is. It's in every sense of the word it's despicable and people should be ashamed of themselves. It's bad. Also for fooling people to believe in that. You standing behind someone who says she's in solidarity with the Oakland police, who's putting the police into the streets. What does that make you? Pig adjacent. Or a pig not in uniform. Private pig. Hey, I mean, it's just, this is what we got to call it. And it's like, what is the historical basis for black people supporting fascists? Like, what is that ever? For, for someone who claims to be a, a in doing work for the masses, doing work for black liberation, doing work for black power, what is the historical basis for you doing this? Or are you trying to open up, you know, a new dialectic? <laughs> are you trying to you trying to take us on a, on a new path? There is no historical basis for this. Like they're like, what what are you doing? And you can, and that's why I'm saying like we gotta start judging people strictly by their actions, not what they say, because a part of neoliberalism, again, like we said, is to be able to push for human rights. We have to push for civil rights. The part of thing for fascism is to say, whatever you can, it's sleight of hand tactics. I'm gonna tell you one thing and do another. There's no reason why I, as a community organizer, should be supporting someone who puts the masses of the community second via their budgets. The Oak, $700 million is going to the police. I don't know how many times I can say this. What's That tells you where my priorities as a city official lies. When I say I'm in solidarity with the pigs, if I say I would give somebody 100 years if I could, you know, as and all again, all we have to do is turn to history. It's uh, yeah. we need we need to. If you want to see a society be better, we need to give the society. Us. Yeah, but you give the you give the people the means to make a society better. Yeah. You give them jobs, you give them housing, healthcare. you give them health care, you give Food. them quality education, you give them clothing, you you treat them with right. dignity and respect, so that they can go out and then treat live people, with dignity and respect, and treat themselves with dignity and respect. What dignity do you have? When your dignity is taken away from you. You know what I'm saying? Like what dignity do you have day in and day out when your womanhood is taken away from you? Your peoplehood is taken away from you. Your manhood is taken away from you day in and day out. And we're supposed to just live live like a dignified human beings and go into these streets and act like everything is normal. All and of we're us supposed to be just happy and we're supposed to live yeah. life being fulfilled. Like this is this this is a, a war. I mean, put it like this. There are mo most most of the people here. There's no way you could be happy under these conditions. Uh, some people are, because I'll be around. No, nah, I'll be looking at them like you too happy. No, no, I mean like there's. There, I'm <laughs> saying I'm like, like these techies. Yeah, I'm talking about like you know like true like like uh, working class people. There's no yeah. way you're happy with the amount of hours you have to, the amount of hours you're putting in, and what you're getting in return, right? 
And there are some people who just completely choose to rebel against the system. Okay, you choose to stay in the house and mope and cry and eat and just be depressed and doom scroll. And there's some people who choose to go and exert that energy by taking what's rightfully theirs. Food, money, clothes, shelter, those are human rights. And if the city won't provide it to me, I'm going to go take it. And that's just what it is. And like, I've, what they say, quote, unquote, I've been a victim of these things. Nigga, they had cars, bipped, catalytic converters taken. I will be a fool. This is what happens. And it's frustrating. It's for, I'm, I'm it pissed. Gonna turn, it ain't going to turn you into a fascist. You feel me? I, go, that's what I'm not going to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it ain't going to turn you into just a reactionary. It's going to say, nah, we got to deepen our political. Under commitment. the guise of what? And deepen our work to be able to change and become our own liberators. I'm supposed to just go even further down the scale of delusion? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. that, that's 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 what that's that what's is. Happening, though. I'm supposed to just go to the opposite side of delusion. Like, you know, this is not gonna happen. There, there, there are true things you could do, and it's like very small things. Like, bro, just start with engaging. If you really, want, if you want to get involved politically, learn politics. Like, truly learn politics. Don't just see what you see, and don't just post what you see other people post. Don't just fall victim to someone uh, saying something they know is gonna trigger an emotional response to you. Oakland, we got to do better. And to do so, we're putting 700 police on the streets. Like, come on. They got and we add in the CHP, you know, and we got the Alameda County Sheriff, and I'm saying we need. But that's the how they get you, though, Pablo. That's what they're doing. They they say they say these terms, Oakland. We they they say the things that the people on the streets are better. We mm-hmm. are saying we need safety. I want better for my family. I want better for my community. How about Oakland? We, we invested in y'all well being. So here goes some uh, universal health care. All these things that have been floated around uh, in in local legislation recently. Universal health care should be tri- is going to be tried in the Bay Area. What's taking so long? If y'all can get 15,000 bombs to uh, the Israeli occupation forces in a matter of two months, 57,000 artillery shells in a matter of three months, we can't get some free health care. We can get no health care around here. (laughs) We can't have housing free. But again, that's again where it becomes the responsibility of us. So if we can say right now that uh, crimes are a byproduct of economics, Right. That the only reason why if we can say that, uh, you know, people who sleep in shelters, people who sleep on the streets work full of part time, people who are on, on food assistance programs work full of part time, cost of basic goods are up. Right. This is basically saying there people have no money. Right. If you have no money and everything in the world costs, what do you have to do? You have to go get money. Right. If there aren't any quality jobs, if. Uh, society has treated you like you are subhuman since the day yo, the people who look like you have touched place on this on this so-called nation. Wouldn't you have a total disregard for this shit too? Wouldn't you have a, I'm going to get it by any means necessary? In fact, excuse me, at the same time they tell you you're only as good as the designer you have. You're only as good as the restaurants you eat at. The bag you can buy. Shoes you have. So don't get mad at the at the people for conforming How to society standards. Is. Y'all go the 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 U.S. government goes and, and and takes resources from people. They go and rape and pillage and steal. The ultimate smash and grab is in the Congo. They don't talk about the they don't talk about the robbery of the tantalum. Hmm. They don't talk about the robbery of the bauxite. They don't talk about the the thirty thousand uh, reportedly thirty thousand Palestinians that the U.S. has aided in their uh, slaughter. What about the U.S. death total? What about the U.S. crimes against humanity? What about the U.S. thefts and robbery of natural resources? What about the way that they rob you every day of your paycheck? What about the genocide of indigenous people? What about the genocide of new African people? Who what about the genocide these of African people? What about the genocide of, uh, of brown people by the United States of America? Their quote-unquote foreign policy, the Central Intelligence Agency leading coups, overthrowing people, overthrowing nations, causing tribal wars... In East Africa, launching drone campaigns. What are we talking about here? To me, I see I see these folks committing crimes as uh, taking heed. Like, oh, so this will be on. This will be doing. This is what I got to do, right? This is how y'all got on. You ain't allowed me in any other space. You ain't, is... I ain't never got to, been able to get a job. So you force me. Or to if I do a... get a job, what kind of job is this? That ain't a job, nigga. That's if you can't afford to buy food. To have health care, to have housing, to take Look, care of your family. This shit 21st century sharecropping. <laughs> like, what, like, what the, uh, the fuck is real. going on here? This is 21st no, no. century sharecropping. 
In a technocratic state. This this some serfdom shit. This mm-hmm. some modern serfdom shit. I get to eat after you get all your stuff together. I basically get your scraps. Niggas feeding us food that ain't really food. Like, come on. I, I see the youth taking, using, observing. Everybody want to talk about being scientists. If I'm 16, 17 years old. Seeing how they get there. And I don't got shit. And I've been living in some projects that ain't been uh, remodeled since the 80s. And I'm looking around and I ain't got shit. And the people telling me I ain't got shit. Then I look and they over there and they taking what they want from people who look like me. Why would I respect anything? I call that. I feel like these kids out here using their common sense. Now we just need to guide it towards something revolutionary. But to mm-hmm. me, I, I, it makes perfect sense why people is smashing our windows. They make perfect sense to me. Do I like it? No, but it makes perfect sense to me. This one plus one equal two. And you have the chemical warfare. The lack of mental health services. Like, do y'all go outside to see some of the conditions they got these kids living? Have y'all been to some of these schools? Like, come on, man. So I think uh, we've offered a lot of, you know, criticisms, but I think we always offer solutions. And I would tell somebody like, look, I don't, I don't, we don't, by no means do we have it all figured out, but we at least thinking for ourselves. We at least looking at the historical conditions, the current conditions, the development of this nation. And I do believe we always are providing solutions in terms of building programs, being in the community, changing the consciousness, changing the ethos. And we ain't me? pissing on people and telling them it's raining. That's the number one thing. They just had that. They uh, they got, you seen the shit they was doing in terms of like who the next police chief could be. Mm-hmm. And it's all these, what they call BIPOC ass shit. Mm-hmm. Like, what did George say? A pig is a pig. I don't care what color you are. Who's, who's, uh, who's, interest are you serving they serving the blue serving the state serving the property protecting the corporations and realistically they're going to be protecting the white neighborhoods you feel me they're going to be protecting the transplants the techies the corporations and the people who's, who who need that protection Bro, that's the what summer the, from the the summer of 2020 or not even the summer like that whole 2020 when like it was beautiful on the town and it's because everybody was getting money from that EDD shit. That's what no one, that's what like people who like, I was, I was, you was, you was hearing from niggas on the streets. Like they was running into niggas and didn't even care. How could I, like, I'm enjoying my life. <laughs> niggas is taking trips. Niggas eating at restaurants. Niggas is buying, niggas is finally feeling like they, like they are part of this society. They got something. Like they got, it was, it was, it was just like, it, it was down, bro. It was down. And all the misplaced energy was, or the, the the anger was going towards the right people. Can't nobody tell me they got my best interest at heart when they constantly putting the corporations before me. No, there, there's there's no way. There's and then, no then way. you go into the corporations, and what happens? What happens in CVS? Everything's locked up. What happens in Target? The most basic goods is locked up. You feel me? That's why I say it's that lack of creativity, lack of understanding. Like we can't even think of a world. To where these niggas ain't the police do nothing around this motherfucker. They do nothing. I watched somebody get bipped in front of the police two days ago. <laughs> they do nothing. These private forces, they do nothing. They just gonna shoot some unarmed person. And that's all they gonna do. They kill some kids. Tase some elderly person. That's all they gonna do. Rob a food truck. I mean, but yeah, what's what's crazy, you know, if even if like with to your point. In 2020, it was 102 murders, still a lot, right? But 2021, 132. 2022, 119. 2023, 124. I was outside, so I know. <laughs> like, I, I I was in the midst of it. I know. It was, niggas was running into niggas at airports. Nothing was at the lake. It was no problems, bro. It was... Bruh, was niggas who've been funking for years outside. So that just show you what? <laughs> that if people's needs is taken care of, if there's money and people is getting money, and what's going to happen? So imagine if we seize the means of production. <laughs> That's imagine if the come, people come down to. is in control of their destiny. Imagine if we have housing. Imagine if we have free water. 
social services, healthcare, how that would transform our relations with other human beings. But again, just the corporations, it's these individuals with billions upon billions of dollars, and we're living in what? Squalor. To the people, I think we just have to first and foremost learn, again, like we've been saying, learn, and then I'll offer you an alternative by just attending something people's programs is having. Just attend something. Or just to just study everything we say and come back and say, nah, here's the flaw in your shit. But I'm trying to tell you, it don't matter what DA is put into place. Whatever mayor. Whatever mayor. Whatever, whatever police chief. If the if the economic system that governs our city is still capitalism, we're going to get Capital the same problems. exact results. Exploitation, inequalities, hatred for humanity. It don't matter if it's coming in black face, blue face, green face. It don't matter what color it is. It's going to all be the same. It don't matter what body parts it got. It don't matter what pronouns it use. If it's pushing capitalism, this is what you're going to get. Straight up. Hello Black. Go to our Patreon, patreon.com slash Pod. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, wherever you get your podcast at. We is at, man. Go to our YouTube. Be sure to subscribe. You feel me? For the people, for the land.